So, Mayor, we'll start off with this general impression of how things are going in the city of Rochester right now. So right now, according to my understanding from the county executive as well as um, the commissioner of Department of Health is that we are maintaining social distancing and staying home, but we are still very, very concerned because the numbers that we're seeing today are basically from two weeks ago and um, the social tracking that's being done online of people that are staying home, we've gone from an A grade to now a C. And I'm concerned that once the weather starts to get a little bit warmer, that people will be going outdoors and we'll have more gathering. And we need to make sure that we maintain the social distance and basically most of all stay home during this time. And you had decided to close some recreational aspects of the city because you were frustrated. You saw people going out, ignoring some of the social distancing warnings that were out there. What do you think is feeding into that? So what's feeding it, I, I think that people are just getting cabin fever, right? So it's going on uh, three to four weeks now and people wanted to get out, they wanted to socialize and there was sort of um, a mis mixed message here um, in the beginning where you know some people believe that, oh, well, if I'm outside, then I should be fine. But the issue is that this is a virus that is contracted be from person to person and touching, so basketball, rugby, you know, even tennis, of touching a tennis ball, you know, hitting it back and forth and then me serving, uh, that all those things, um, you can pass this virus back and forth. And so um, we wanted people to understand that we are in charge of how this virus spreads. Every one of us can do our part to make sure that we keep our family members safe. Anecdotally, some people within the African-American community have come to me concerned saying, I feel like because we haven't seen a large, up until recently, a large number of black people impacted by this, there was a perception that it wasn't impacting this particular minority community. Well, I can tell you in the very beginning, many people believed that African-Americans could not contract this uh, virus and uh, they that myth or methodology was out there for a number of weeks because it did not seem like people were, uh, African Americans were getting this disease, this virus. Um, now we see the numbers coming from places like Chicago, Milwaukee, you know, Michigan, North Carolina, and we're seeing that this virus is actually catastrophic to those communities, especially African Americans and African American males. And so providing the message that, and, and wanting to know the data, I believe that here in Monroe County, we have not seen that, um, that disparity rear its head yet, but because of all the underlying health conditions, the disparities already in the health system, we do know that if we do not maintain social distancing, if we do not um, understand that this is a virus that can actually um, kill your loved one, then you will, and if you go to their home, you will you know, give it to them even though you may be asymptomatic. Um, those types of messages were not provided in the very beginning and I think that that is something that we have to change now. We've talked a lot about the impact this has on small businesses, big businesses, certain areas of society. What does this situation look like for those who are already in severe poverty? Oh, it, it's devastating for people that are in severe poverty. Um, right now, of course, we are providing lunch um, daily um, at Monday through Friday in our art centers as well as some Rochester City School District sites. And we, of course, have seen the numbers go up. Um, in partnership with Food Link, um, of course, they're delivering baskets and, 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 and handing out boxes of food. But we also know that when it comes down to rent, when it comes down to RGE, and all those all those other bills are being are lining up right now. And so the government, fortunately enough for us, um, uh, the governor under his leadership have opened up many ways. And of course, our senators and uh, Congress people have done a yeoman's job with the CARES Act of giving uh, resources to people. We hope that it will be enough depending on how long this pandemic lasts. Um, but for people that are in, uh, in poverty, this um, is going to have a catastrophic 
catastrophic effect on them and we don't know on the back end how we'll be able to make sure that we're, we help them come out of this um, and take care of their families. I guess that gets to my next point is at some point we do have to look past this, mm -hmm. right? And I know that you've given some thought to that as well. What would you like to see as we exit this crisis? So as we exit the crisis, we want to make sure that people first have the resources that they need uh, to maintain their lives every day so that they're not being evicted if they're renting or losing their homes if they're paying their mortgage. And I believe that right now we have solutions for much of that. Um, we want to make sure that they'll be able to continue to provide a nutrition uh, to their families and be able to access health care, the health care systems, when we want them also to be able to go back to work. And we want to be able to make sure that we're helping businesses right now maintain. And you've seen that the city, as well as the county and the state, have released uh, and the federal government a number of different programs to help small businesses um, and micro businesses weather the storm. And Rochester, our economy, we don't have a um, you know a, a number of large um, um, employers. What we do have is a number of micro and medium and small employers. And so we want to make sure that we keep them going give them the resources that they need to open back up and to get back to work and to employ their employees again. And that's one of the things that um, we think is very, very important. So there's a three prong sort of approach, take care of the people, take care of, the, of, of their health, but also take care of the businesses so that people can get back to work. Are there any financial programs that you'd like to highlight when it comes to that? So the Small Business Association has a different program. The City of Rochester, we have a number of programs that we've started. Kiva Rochester, we had already started that before. We've laxed, um, they have laxed uh, many of their criteria. Um, our small business uh, program through the Neighborhood and Business Development as well as Redco, we um, opened that up, I believe, last Monday. We've had um, almost 120 applicants um, where we're processing those as quickly as possible. I know that Comita has released um, some uh, grants as well because we don't necessarily, what we heard from businesses is that, look, you know, I, I can't take out a loan because I, 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 I'm not making any money to pay it back. Mm -hmm. And so they wanted um, some, pro some programs where they could utilize grants to keep people at people to work. And part of the CARES Act was that if they were able to keep people employed, then 50% of the, that payroll, they could actually roll over and get some um, dollars for. So it's going to be a long process, um, but we believe that we are resilient. We know that Rochesterians um, are a resilient people. We will overcome this. And I think that that's the most important thing that we understand that even though today is very, very hard, we are all working together so that tomorrow things can be better. Message for renters mm -hmm. at this point. So right now we know that the court systems basically have been closed and people cannot be evicted. We are looking at programs. Um, one of the programs through the CARES Act was ESG funding, which um, would allow us as a community to develop a, develop a plan to help renters as well as landlords become whole. And so we're trying to figure out the criteria by which we can do that. And I know that Carol Wheeler and Commissioner Kirkmeyer are working very, very hard with our community partners to come up with a plan. But today, renters cannot be evicted. And so we want to make sure that um, even though many of them are not paying rent, that we are able to make sure that when the courts open back up and when people in the economy gets back going, that they will continue to be able to remain in their homes. You're a mother of a young daughter. Any advice for parents who are now home trying to figure out how to manage that situation? <laughs> I would say find things for them to do. Um, spend time with, with your family. I think that one thing that this virus has done is made sure that we all understand what's, what's important, 
right? And so all those things that we might have idolized and spent a lot of time, you know, doing, whether that's work or watching, you know, entertainment, all those things that we idolize, now we are forced to take a stock and take a step back and look at at home. And so lean on, I would also say lean on your faith. Understand that, you know, your uh, children didn't ask to come here. We, we chose to bring them here. And um, now that, that now that we are parents, we need to make sure that they understand what's happening. They're scared as well. They're not at school with their, their peers. They're not, um, you know, with their teachers in that experience for them, of course, is, you know, um, is challenging, but do fun things with them. Um, one of the things that we have done, I'm on What's Good Rochester. My daughter and I have been doing science experiments. Uh, there's coloring that you can do, things that don't cost a lot of money, um, things that you already have within your home that you can do together. Go out and take them for a bike ride or a walk or something uh, just to get out of the house just for a moment, um, but maintain social distancing while doing that but most of the time most Im important that I think is to just let them know that you love them and that you're all in this together and that we will get out of this together I hear videos have been part of the routine yes <laughs> yes uh, so uh, the last one we did was slime the first one we made a volcano out of baking soda and vinegar and so um, those types of you know we just given some ideas for parents um, draw color play games uh, hide and seek those um, things that kids love to do um, just spend some time with them and when you need a break you know tell them to go read a book <laughs> you know uh, to, you know give them a book to read in and both of you take that break where you read a book and, and they read a book or have them read a book to you cook together um, do all those things that you wanted to do with your child, but you might not have had time to do. Um, and, 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 and thank, you know, be thankful for the time that you have to um, invest in, in your children um, at this point in time. One of the last questions that I have, Governor Cuomo had said recently that he wanted to see local law enforcement perhaps enforce social distancing a bit more. Like we mentioned earlier, you seemed fairly frustrated. Would you want to see more enforcement of social distancing from police, or where do you want to see that at this point? So what we are encouraging our officers to do is, you know, in a community policing way, you know, educate. Say, if, if you see social distance, not people not adhering to social distancing, then, you know, you go up and say, you know, you need to be six feet away from each other um, and educate, but not necessarily be punitive. The thing about this that people have to understand is that we're all in this together, right? And you have the power to make sure that your loved one lives. That's literally the message here. We all have the power by doing our part. And if everybody does what they're supposed to do, then we'll all make this, make it out of here and make it out of this situation in a better place. Um, so if I have a role to play and you have a role to play, let's be our brothers and sisters keeper. And let's not necessarily get punitive with this unless that's the last resort. The last resort for me was to take down the basketball courts and the tennis nets and all of that. That's the last resort because we want people just to adhere to this because we want you to be safe and we want our community to be safe on the other side of this. My last question for you is general cooperation amongst leadership. Obviously you come out and you stand at the podium and you talk about the cooperation. How has that been since the start of the crisis? It has been a great partnership. I cannot uh, give not only the county executive and his team a lot of credit for keeping us informed as he is the, the leader on this um, issue because the county uh, commissioner of health reports directly to the county executive, but he's kept every level of government informed. I can't uh, thank the governor enough for his daily briefings and for his team on, uh, you know, daily briefing us on calls and giving us up-to-date information, making sure that we have access to PPE for our employees. 
it is has really worked well here in New York State for us to be able to get the resources that we need in order to keep our employees safe because government is an essential service. So people are still out there picking up trash. Our police officers are still working. Our firefighters are still out there. And we want them to also be able to go out there and do their job and be safe. And that's because we have the great partnerships that we do here, not only in Monroe County, but across the state of New York. Yeah, I apologize. You mentioned PPE, so I did want to add this. Do you think that the governor will look elsewhere if he has to pull ventilators and whatnot from upstate New York than here? You probably heard the county executive say, we're already in need of this in mm -hmm. our community. So I, I think that um, because the low numbers are upstate right now, but eventually um, I think that the way that this virus has spread, we want to make sure that we take care of home first. And we recognize that uh, New York City is having a tough time. Um, yesterday, we learned that my uncle, my, my dad's brother, um, who was um, mentally handicapped, passed away from COVID down in New York City. And so we do know that um, this virus is taking New York City by storm and um, they need help, but we also wanna make sure that we take care of Monroe County and have the ventilators that we need here. And I believe that um, the governor is going to do that as a last resort, um, depending on what we see happening across the community. We wanna thank uh, those uh, people that have volunteered to give ventilators to New York City at this point in time. But we also know that our numbers um, have started to grow with people being in ICU beds and we want to make sure that when people have to go to the hospital here, that they have those ventilators that they can be on. Yeah, made me think of one last thing. Uh, nursing homes, we have a lot of them within the city of Rochester. We don't get specific numbers of where deaths are in buildings, just region. What does the nursing home situation look like right now? So you have to talk to Dr. Mendoza, um, but I, know, I do know that early on they shut down visitors to those nursing homes. You, we have heard numbers where uh, nursing home um, patients as well as staff have contracted, and I think that they're doing everything possible because that population is so vulnerable when it comes down to actually um, succumbing to this uh, particular uh, virus, as well as, um, as we're seeing across the country, African Americans at alarming rates. And so we want to make sure that we provide the messaging to all of the employees and patients and families that we're doing our best. And I know that the Commission of Health, Dr. Mendoza, is really working overtime to make sure that we have the up-to-date information and that we are keeping our citizens as safe as possible. But we all have to do our part by listening to the, the five keys that they've outlined. Anything else you'd like to add, Mayor? I just want everyone to be safe, to stay home. And I know that it's very, very hard right now. But if we listen today, we will see tomorrow.